Hi there, and welcome to this film about covalent molecules. Molecules as opposed to covalent networks, because I suppose you could say that the networks are themselves very large molecules, but when we're talking about covalent molecular substances, we're talking about substances that are made up of repeating units rather than one enormous molecule, as is the case for networks. And hopefully by the end of this film, you'll be able to uh, explain the difference between an intramolecular bond and an intermolecular force. Okay, so if you try and make sure that you think of these things, one as bonds and one as forces, even though, as we'll see later on, some people do mention intermolecular bonds, if you try and keep the two things separate, it will make things easier for you later on. So try and think of the intramolecular as being bonds and the intermolecular as being forces. And hopefully, you'll also be able to uh, uh, state and explain some of the physical properties that these substances tend to have, although this is far from being a hard and fast rule. Okay, so to, uh, to start off with, let's have a look at some molecules in the solid or the liquid state. So that is to say, when they're very close together. Okay, this doesn't really apply to a, a substance in the gaseous state because the molecules are so far apart from one another that the, any interaction between the molecules is pretty insignificant. Okay, so here we've got a hydrogen chloride molecule, so HCl, could equally draw it just as a Lewis or electron dot diagram, like so. Okay, but here they've uh, attempted to show some, or to give you some idea of the size of the atoms involved. Okay, so we've got two hydrogen chloride molecules quite close to one another, and the hydrogen and the chlorine atoms within a molecule, so that is intra, they're joined together by covalent bonds, and as we know, that is a sharing of an electron pair. So this is the intramolecular bond. Okay, it's actually within a molecule. Okay, and that's always strong, just like any uh, chemical bond is considered a strong thing. And then in between the two molecules, so rather than within one molecule, but in between, and therefore inter international or internet as opposed to intranet. So we've got the intermolecular, the things that are happening between two molecules. And we tend to call these forces rather than bonds. Okay, so the intermolecular forces, they are between one molecule and the next. And the intramolecular bonds, they're within each molecule. Okay? And what we ought to remember about these two things is that the intermolecular ones are weak. Well, certainly by comparison with the covalent bonds, they can become quite strong, but compared to co covalent bonds, they'll always be pretty weak. Okay, so think of bonds as being strong and forces being weak, and that will be setting you on the right track. Just remember, though, that when we're talking about the Attraction between two nuclei or a shared pair of electrons, that's a covalent bond. So we're talking about intramolecular within the molecule. And between molecules, we've got these intermolecular forces. And if you're in year 12, then pretty soon you'll be learning about all the different kinds of these intermolecular forces. But in year 11, you can pretty much leave it there for now. Anyway, let's just consider what sort of physical properties these substances might have. Okay. Remember that if you're trying to spot what sort of substances will be covalent molecules, you're looking for co a combination of non-metal with non-metal, but not one of the networks that we've looked at. Okay, But rather like with all the other substances, we just need to consider their conductivity and their melting and boiling points. Okay, so when we're looking at conductivity, we want to think about charge carriers. Now, these as we've experienced, don't have to be electrons. They could be electrons or they could be ions. But since this is a covalent substance, there aren't any ions present, so we can't use them to explain conduct. Well, there won't be any to conduct a current. And likewise with the electrons, because they're all used up in bonds, they're not able to conduct electricity. So there aren't any electrons that are able to conduct. Okay, it's not that there aren't any electrons at all, it's just that they've been used up in bonding. So these substances will not conduct electricity, 
there's no exceptions to that rule. And if we look at their melting and boiling points, well, to melt or boil one of these substances, you've basically got to get one molecule away from the next. And to do that involves breaking the intermolecular forces, not the intramolecular bonds. So when you're talking about melting or boiling these substances, try not to say anything about bonds being weak. In fact, on the whole, um, I'm trying to think of an example, but I can't. There are, there, there's, there's never going to be any marks available for saying that bonds are weak. Okay, Try and think of forces being weak and bonds being strong, whether they're ionic or covalent or metallic, and that will put you on the right track. Okay, well, that's really all there is to it. I suppose we could talk about solubility, but there's so many exceptions to the rule that these are generally insoluble that it's really not a rule worth remembering. So that's about it for covalent molecular substances.